Hey everybody, welcome to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and here on my YouTube channel. And today I want to do a video for you um, to show you um, what analog or vintage, analog vintage style plugins can do to a drum mix to give it character and warmth. I still get this question all the time. As a matter of fact, I've gotten it twice in the last week about plugins and we always talk about stock plugins and vintage plugins and one's better and blah 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 and we won't go into that whole debate again because we've done that 4,000 times already however I'm in the middle of or the start of this mix for a client and I've just got done kind of processing the drums it's about 80 percent there and I thought this would be a great opportunity to show you what some vintage style plugins can do to make a drum sound sound thick and fat and give it a lot of character um, and so we're going to do that today so we're going to take a look at um, this drum kit, which has kick, snare, hi-hats, toms, a couple of floor toms, overheads left and right, uh, close room mics, and far room mics. And <clears throat> what we are using here, um, I have auto align on a few of the drum insert on a few of the drum tracks to correct the phase, and then I have across as my first uh, plug-in across all the drums, I have the um, Fab Filter Pro Q to just do my filtering for high cut and low cut filters. Go check out one of the videos I've just did in my on my YouTube channel on um, the talks in depth about this and how this can add clarity to a mix. And then the next plugin that I'm using is I'm using the um, tape emulator. And um, I use tape emulation on the, the very first processing um, insert on all my tracks. And this is um, the uh, Studer A800 multi-track tape machine by Universal Audio. Um, I also use the VTM by Slate Digital, which if you've been following me on YouTube, you already know that. Reason why I'm using this one today is because this, unlike the Slate, it gives you a little more uh, character. It's a little more obvious, a little bit more control. The Slate is a lot more subtle. I love the Slate tape machine, um, but I picked this up. I got a bunch of uh, free coupons and special deals over at Universal Audio, um, and I was able to get this plugin, um, which is normally a $350 plugin, I think for 80 bucks. So I said, let me try this out. I've heard a lot of good things about it, and it has a different sound than the tape than the, than the Slate digital tape machine. But you don't, it doesn't matter what tape machine that you use, um, I would recommend using any kind of tape saturation plugin, whether it be the Kramer Master Tape by Waves or the J37 by Waves or the Slate Digital VTM or the Universal Audio, or however many other companies that make tape emulators. So I'm not going to go in depth in the review on how this tape machine works. I'm just going to show it to you. We'll do that at a later time. But as you can see, I have a tape machine here, and I have across all my drum tracks, it's the um, right up here in blue, the, the second plug-in in the chain. And because I have all these channels linked, when I bypass it, it will bypass all the tape machines at once, so you can see or hear the overall effect. The second plug-in that I have in my chain, um, which we'll go into, is the NLS uh, Wave, the Waves Nonlinear Summary Analog Console Emulation. I am using the Neve console on this particular mix, okay? And again, if I bypass this, it will bypass all the NLSs. And then I also have as my third uh, plugin in my chain, I'm using the um, Neve 88RS channel strip by Universal Audio. So I'm using the NLS's Neve console emulation and I'm following it up by a Neve channel strip. Um, and the reason why I use a channel strip, the same channel strip on all the drum tracks is to give that nice, tight, uniform kind of a sound. This signal flow that you see uh, in front of you on the screen here is emulating what it was like back in the day when you did everything analog. You would come off the live floor into a multi-track tape machine, out of the tape machine into the input of a console, in this case the Neve, and then through that console you'd go through the preamp section and the input section which is the NLS, and then you go over to your the rest of your channel strip. This particular channel strip has um, a compressor gate section on the left here, it has an equalizer section in the center, and it has a filter section in the top right hand corner and an output section. And then from this, it would go out of the Neve console into, into a mix bus, which we'll show you in a bit. And then it would go out of that into another tape machine. That's kind of the signal flow of the analog, the good old days of analog, and that's what I've kind of done here to emulate that in the, in the DAW realm. So what I'm going to do is right now all these are bypassed. I'm going to bypass the Neve so you can see all the plugins in gray are bypassed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by just playing back this section of music and just turning on the Studer tape machine so you can hear what tape does to this overall drum sound. But before we do that, let's listen to this drum track without any processing at all. As you can see, all of the inserts are bypassed with the exception of the Fab Filter Pro Q, which is just doing high cut and low cut filters. Okay, so let's listen to the music with no analog vibe.
Okay there, so that is a drum kit on its own. Sounds really good. Again, keep in mind, this is not mixed in any way. This is just a little, some levels. I threw up the faders, kind of balanced them, did a little bit of panning, and that's it. Okay, there's no, no other effects on these. So the drum kit was recorded really well to begin with. And that is a key. As you know, good drum recording right out of the gate. It's going to sound good regardless. That sounds good on its own. Okay, so now let's add... I'll play back that same section of music, um, and I'm going to add and take the tape machines in and out. And as I bypass and unbypass this little button up here, you will see the studer go from gray to blue. Remember, gray is disabled, blue is enabled. Okay, so here we go. Listen to how thick those toms get. Okay, so hopefully there you can hear that. If you're listening to this on a good set of studio monitors and, monitors and or headphones, you should be able to hear what the effect of tape has. Again, it's subtle, but you can hear a lot more thickness in the kick drum, a lot more bottom end. The top end kind of warms out a little bit. The snare drum kind of comes to life, and that's what tape does. It adds a little bit of natural compression. It will shave off some of the high end and kind of warm and thicken things up. That's what tape does. Again, whether you're using the Studer or using any tape machine, it just adds that nice warmth and character. So now we're going to leave the tape machine in play and we're going to go to the NLS here. Again, we'll bypass it. Now the NLS is going to be a little more subtle. This Neve channel, uh, this Neve console emulation is a little more subtle, but what you want to listen for is particularly the snare drum and the hi-hat is where I think you can hear it the most, where it kind of just opens up a little bit and the cloud kind of lifts off that, uh, off that snare drum a little bit. Um, it's, it's a subtle effect, but it is there. So let's take a listen. I'll start with it off and then we will bring it in. Okay, so hopefully you can hear that there. The snare drum really kind of changed, the EQ almost sounds like it changes. It changes the tonality of that snare just a little bit, and it really makes it sound nice. So that is the Waves uh, NLS on the Neve console. Now, last but not least, certainly, we're going to go over to the Neve channel strip, and again, it's in bypass mode. We'll play that back and forth, and again, listen in the tom section at the beginning, um, how much thicker the toms get and how much more alive the toms come to life, and then same thing with the kick drum here. Okay, so let's start with bypass mode, then I'll kick it in.
Okay, so again, hopefully you can hear that as well. Um, again, the Neve channel strip really makes things get a lot thicker and it kind of tightens everything up because we're running the compressor on each one of these channel strips, even though I'm just doing a very, very light amount of compression, not even 3 dB, probably only a dB or two across all these different channel strips. But what it does is it takes those individual elements of that drum kit and makes them sound like one instrument and it thickens up and it warms up. And again, depending on your style and your flavor, you may think that's a little too warm. It's not bright enough. You can always add a little bit of EQ in the, in the channel strip to kind of brighten things up. And just by listening to that, again, this is not really mixed. There's probably a little bit too much kick drum in that. I have to mix this, but I just wanted to show you the example. So now that we have all of three of these in, we're going to bypass them again all at once and, and just take you from where we started. And I'll bring them in one at a time. Um, I have to click them one at a time to kind of give you the overall effect. And then I'll back them off and bring them back in. So here we go. Listen to how much those toms change. How thin they get. Okay, so hopefully that was a good example for you. You can tell when the, the drums, when you bypass all these plugins, it just gets real thin, kind of papery sounding. But at the beginning, before we listened to any of these plugins, we thought the drum kit sounded pretty good, and it did sound good on its own. But you, this just demonstrates when you add a little bit of analog character to a track, how it can take something and really bring it to life in a subtle way. Each one of these plugins is subtle on its own, but the cumulative effect is quite noticeable. And we're only talking about the drum kit. When you do this across your entire mix and you start bypassing things globally like this, you'll really be able to hear how much analog vintage style plugins, when you buy good plugins, Waves, Universal Audio, Slate Digital, and there's others, obviously. Those are the three I typically use. Um, how much warmth and character they can give to a track. Okay, so now that we have all these plugins in, the last thing I just want to show you is the drum bus compressor, because there is a drum bus compressor on this um, that you've been listening through, which has been just doing a very minor amount of bus compression. But I'm using um, the Slate Digital uh, FG Gray, which is the um, SSL console emulator. Um, and so, um, again, I won't walk through this whole entire plugin, but we're doing a really, uh, a very... Um, two to one ratio here, just a little bit of compression just to kind of tighten things up. Um, a pretty uh, fast release, um, a pretty slow attack. And we're compressing actually more than I'm even using in makeup gain. I'm only using about two dB of makeup gain and we're compressing during the tom sections, probably close to three dB. And then during the drum hi-hat kick snare section, uh, probably two dB. Um, and just kind of give you a before and after. So here is before, and then I'll turn this on, and you'll see the meter uh, light up when it's on, and you'll see the blue meter underneath, and I'll just give you a quick listen. Okay, so hopefully you can hear that. There's a pretty major difference there. Again, we're only compressing about 1 dB and only making up about 1 dB in gain there, but you can hear how the snare in particular kind of just falls apart in the track when you bypass this uh, bus compressor. The FG Gray does a great job uh, just tightening things up and making things more punchy and more alive. 
Okay, so that is today's video looking at uh, analog uh, vibe and vintage style plugins and how they can add character and vibe to a drum kit. And I'll probably do several of these videos as I'm working through this mix to kind of show you what the accumulative effect is over the course of an entire track. If you've never used any vintage style plugins, I recommend you go out to a couple of these websites, download some demos, try them out. Um, I think if you like that kind of sound, it can really add nice, uh, nice professional warm character to your track. So for more recording tips and tricks and concepts and training, go over to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. Click on the products uh, link at the top of the page. Check out the Made Easy series. At the, as of the recording of this video, end of January 2015, about a week ago, I just released Compression Made Easy, which we really dive deep into this compressor and others and show you how compressors work and show you how to listen for compression, how to know what to listen for, to know whether it's doing any good or any harm to your tracks. Um, and then also check out EQ Made Easy, Mixing Made Easy. The whole Made Easy product line is super, super, super affordable, wonderful training. I've gotten tons of reviews views on the website about it, uh, all for the price of less than probably a few cups of coffees at your local Starbucks. So it's a wonderful deal, downloadable right to your computer so you can have them forever and ever. And I go down deep into all these different concepts and techniques to show you not only what I'm doing, but how I'm doing it. And most importantly, a lot of the before and after comparisons to teach you how to listen to what these effects do to your overall sound so you know how to properly apply them to your productions. So again, until next time, this is David from HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and I will talk to you all soon. Take care.